Jazz Red Talk Show. I'm your host, Jazz Red. We've got an important dignitary going to tell you a little something. I'm going to know her name, and she's going to tell you about the owner. My name is Clarissa Griffin, and the owner of this fabulous facility is Napoleon McCovery. That is my brother-in-law. Um, he's a great guy. Uh, him and my sister have a son together. They're not longer together, but I'm 51. They did 35 good years of marriage. So that's all I know is my brother-in-law, Mr. Napoleon McCovery. And he's a good person. He No, he's not a good person. He's a great person. That's my brother-in-law to death do a support. <laughs> Jazz and Red getting them to say something about the owner. Jazz and Red talk show, the lady that did the tables, we gonna let her say her name and what she know about the owner. Your name. Okay, my name is Valencia Davis and Nat Napoleon McCovery. He's a wonderful person. And we came here, we decorated this club because this is what he wanted. He said he wanted elegance and that's what we gave him. And it looks so. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It looks so wonderful in here, and we're just blessed to know a man like him, cause he's a good guy, and everybody knows that. And I'm just blessed to know him. Thank you. That's who did the tables right there. Take the cat. Look at her getting up. I'm finna get up out of here. <laughs> Jazz Red Talk Show and. We got the main man in here, and uh, he gonna at least say hello. At least I can say hello. Welcome to Club Elegant, baby. We are back, back and back. You gotta say something, baby? Yeah, she gotta say something. Yeah, come on now. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Club Elegant. Enjoy. <laughs> did, you, did you tell him your name? They trying to act shy. Y'all know that man was, uh, let me show him to you. He was the Mardi Gras. He was the Mardi Gras, uh, oh, the goat. Yeah, that was the goat man years ago. And and I got him, uh, what was it? He, uh, 2011, he was the goat man for Pritchard, Alabama. Wasn't it Pritchard? Pritchard. Pritchard, Alabama, mom. All right. Uh, he kind of shy, but I don't know why. Don't they ran? We had to start drinking yet because we can't say much. We had the alcohol in our butt yet. Oh, okay. They ain't drinking yet. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate you now, but you did it. You did it. Jazz and Red, we love you. Peace out. Jazz and Red talk show. She going to say something and give you her name, and y'all know who she is once she give you that name. Yeah, my name is Deja Carter. We in Club Alabama. Having a happy new year with Lady Red, and it's going down in the elegance. Happy New Year. Do you know Nap? Yeah, Nap, Nap in the house tonight. We're having a good time. It's going down. Good person. Good person. All right. Say hello to your friend, Mary. My friend, Mary. Mary. All right. You're going to have a good time. Jazz Red, we love you. Peace out. I know it. Jazz Red Talk Show. I'm your host, Jazz Red. This is uh, the elegance. Look how I look in here. How you like that? Wow. A lot of hard work and determination. You see what it do? Hard work and determination pay off. All right, Jazz Red, we love you. Peace out. I do not own the rights to those music. <laughs> if you can hear it. I'm a little... Desiree Talk Show, we got an important dignitary in the house. What's your name? I just want to say hello to everybody, and I'm glad everybody made a new year, and have a good year. And I'm up in the elegant, and it is it's elegant too, like they say. It really is, really, really. Y'all come out and support. So we up in here, sugar shake up in here. Desiree Talk Show, we've got a businessman that own a club itself come in and patronize with Mr. Knapp. What's your name now? Yeah, well, we, we're here 
to celebrate with Nap, a, a businessman of tenacity, you know. And I'm going to call him the comeback kid. You know, and that's what I like about business. I like people like Nap and, and the club that we are, we get together, we support each other. You know, in order to be successful, we have to make sure that we elevate each other. And so that's why we're here tonight to celebrate this grand opening. I want to encourage everybody to come out, support Nap, support us down at the old State Street and and we just kind of change hands and hope that this is a new beginning for people in this community to know that we can work together and make good things happen for the community. I'm Wiley Day, uh, the owner of Club 601 Society. Everybody know it at the Elks on State Street. Come out and see both of us. Uh, we will be celebrating each other. And I hope that you all see the same. My address is 601 State Street, Mobile, Alabama, 36603. That's what it's about. All right, Mr. Date. <laughs> Jazz of Red Talk Show, and I'm your host, Jazz of Red. We got important dignitary. He gonna give you his name and tell you what he know about now. How y'all doing? My name is Robert Benoff. Nap is my friend, my big brother, and my partner. And we're glad to be ba open back up now. So tell your friends about what's going on at Club Elegant, where everybody can come and have a good time. Nobody will get put out. Everybody enjoy themselves. And tell your friends, too. We back live now. Thank you. Jazz Red. Peace out. Jazz Red talk show. And uh, this is a good friend of mine from back in the day. She going to give you her name. What's your name? Barbara Cheney. Hold that mic. Tell us something about that. Uh, my name is Barbara Cheney, and I help Nap to get back in the business, and I'm one of his regulars, and he's the best that anyone could want to have as a manager of a club. <laughs> nice seeing you, Barbara. Jazz Red, peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show, we got an important dignitary here. He gonna tell you his name. Hey, I'm Eric. I'm out here enjoying myself with one of my work buddies. And it's good to see her again. And everybody have a blessed day. I'm up to Naps. Congratulations to Nap. <laughs> Say congratulations. Congratulations to Nap. He feeling good now, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out. <laughs> That's my friend. Oh, it gonna look all right. Jazz Red Talk Show, we got important dignity here. And uh, y'all see that outfit? Lord have mercy. Look at that. Look at them shoes. Look at them shoes. Uh, this is how smooth do it. Give them your name, man, and tell them about uh, tell them about Nap. What's your name? Hey, how y'all doing? My name is. How you doing? This is Earl Smith, a.k.a. Smooth, a.k.a. Roman Rome. I'm here at Club Elegance. That's right, y'all. Club Elegance back open, St. Stephen Road, and we're gonna be doing that thing. Grown folks party, y'all. Y'all need to come out, check out hey, my boy Napoleon McCovery. We back in the house. We back home, y'all. We back open. Club Elegance back open. This is your boy Smooth, y'all come and check me out. And hey, we out there having a good time. We're gonna be out here for some time tonight. But hey, but, but best of all, we back open. Grown folks, all right? Grown folks party. Y'all right. check him out walking off. Get on, get it. Hey, look at that. He ready, ain't he? He ready, ain't he? <laughs> Jazz Red Talk Show. I'm your host, Jazz Red. We've got a beautiful little girl. I call her little girl because she's so little and cute. We got a young lady here finna tell you her name. Hello, my name is Lakeisha Gray. He's a very kind man. He's very generous. He's a man of God. And I'm glad he opened his club back up for us to have a good time. Somewhere to mingle and see our old friends. Just have a nice time. I love it. Thank you so much, Jazz Red. We love you. Peace out. 
Jazzeria Talk Show, and I'm your host, Jazzeria. We got an important dignitary here. What's your name, young man? My name is David Edwards. Okay. What are what are we doing today? What are we doing here? And where are we where are we? And what are we doing? We're here at the Dearborn Street YMCA. This is uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, and this morning uh, we are feeding the youth ambassadors which we honored on yesterday evening at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s annual Black Tie Gala. So we'll be getting, getting ready to march after we finish breakfast feeding the young kids and giving, talking to them and listening to them give us their synopsis and analogy of life as they see it now and talk about where they're going from here. This is a birthday celebration. And a birthday celebration should be a fun time, should be a good time. And we're celebrating the things that Dr. King have accomplished, the things that we have accomplished thus far, and what our strategy is for going forward. Wow, wow. Dad's gonna go in and get just a little footage of the kids that you're feeding. They got breakfast here. Absolutely. Free? Free breakfast. Do we have to pay? It's free? Free no, for the kids. No, ma'am. I ain't called no names, but you got a lot of organizations <laughs> that capitalize off of Dr. King's birthday. And they have events to create and make money, but there's nothing else following it during the year. So what we decided to do about four years ago was to have a breakfast for the kids, because that's our future. If we don't protect, guide, and lead our future, then they'll be lost like the generation we're experiencing right now. Yeah. So we must do something to curtail it, and that begins with us. It does. It does. Thank you. I know you got a lot to do. I gotta go. We're getting ready for the march. Jazz and Red, we love you. Thank you. Peace out. Whatever it is you are consistent at, you can't help but get better. But that consistency doesn't show up unless there's a commitment. Do you know that Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team? Cut. Now my question is this. I wonder. I just wonder if he ever went back to that coach. <laughs> I wonder if that coach lived long enough to see. Wasn't that, wasn't that right? If the coach lived long enough to see the, like the person that I cut, it's now become a legend. And that's what brings me talk about commitment. Because without commitment, there's no consistency. Without consistency, there's no success. But without success over time, there's no legacy. Well, Dr. Martin King Jr. has a legacy, but that legacy comes out of his success in civil rights. The things that he did and was able to accomplish. But that success didn't come from, it came from his consistency. But that consistency came from his commitment. So what I want to encourage everybody here to do today is make a commitment to be a better you. This is a better version of yourself. I'm, I'm not telling you to be a Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I'm not comparing to him. I just want you to be better than you were yesterday. You are your own competition. Your only competition. And so many people, you don't see that. They compare themselves to somebody else. I'm not as tall as him. I'm not as fine as her. They do all of those things and they never become the best version of themselves. If we never realize that we are our own competition, they never put in the work. If I didn't realize that I had more to offer, I never would have put myself in a position to talk. I talk about me stuttering as a child. I literally, I would volunteer to read these things. I would really, I would put myself in a position where I was forcing myself because I knew I had something to offer. And what I want all of you to understand is you have something to offer. These little babies, these young ladies, you have something to offer. There's somebody waiting for you. There's somebody looking at you. And you'll be surprised if you just, if you just ask people that you hang around. Tell them what you think about. Just ask them, what do you think about? Your coworkers, your family members. It's, it, 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 it amazes me how many people don't really realize who's watching. How many people don't realize what impact they have? It amazes me. And I know some people do it out of ego. You know, they want to hear all the good accolades and stuff. 
But if you don't understand the impact you can make, you'll never understand the responsibility that comes with that. I try to feel like encouraging people to understand that they have something to offer the world. There are, there are people that are waiting for you to show up. But if you never do that, if you never take that time, if you never realize your importance and your value, you never put in the work. You will never put in the work. So, I want to call you. Your value is what is the driving force behind the commitment, your consistency, your success, and your legacy. God put something in you that nobody else has. God put something in you that even if somebody else has the same talent, they can't do it, they can't do it the same way you can do it. And they can do it at the same time. Around this country, there are people that are speaking at different breakfasts, but they're not here. I am. I realize I have, I have a purpose even here today. And wherever you are, whoever listens to you, whoever you hang out with, you have a chance to influence them for the better. You have a chance to change their life. So understanding the value that you have. So many of us around negative people so much that it affects us, our outlook. But we need to, to me, negativity, I hate to say that it's like a fart. It stinks. It stinks, but we have a chance, we have a chance to change the atmosphere. We have a chance to look at the positive. We have a chance to make an impact and make a difference. And in doing so, we can help somebody else because we become the example. You know, just like I talk about those young people, they realize at a young age that they were leading somebody, a nephew, a niece, a brother, a sister, was looking up to them. And I will tell you this, the person that's looking up to you, they don't have to be younger than you. They can be older than you, and, and they, can, they can be inspired by you. So don't take, don't take for granted the opportunity that you have change somebody's life. There are a lot of senior citizens. They are looking for hope. They're looking for somebody to carry the torch, somebody else of, of a younger generation to pick up the mantle and actually change this world. They will look up to you, even being a young person. So I don't want you to forget that we all have an opportunity to make a difference. Dearborn Street, why people too unite the dream they are feeding and look who we got here this first lady and that pretty lady there and Jazz is going to get out of here and get ready for the march they going to feed the kids Jazz Red you know, peace out Jazz Red Talk Show this is the ILA Hall um wow how you like that ILA Hall I've got a buddy that wrote the Davis Avenue book. Her name is Paulette Davis Harden. We're going to come back. I'm finna call her and she's going to tell you about this building. Cause Now she know way more history on this avenue. She did a research. We finna get Paulette on the phone. Peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show. I got my good friend on the phone here. Miss Paulette Harden. Davis Harden. Paulette Davis Harden. How you doing today, Paulette? I'm fine. How are you? All right. Now, uh, you can tell my TV viewers something about this building here. Okay, um, it's the uh, ILA Hall. And on January 1st, 1959, Martin Luther King came to Mobile and he spoke uh, at the ILA Hall. Wow. And that is the building that he spoke. Wow. What about the building? You got anything to say about the building there? It's the ILA Hall, so I, I know I, I just, I know I kept seeing this building here, but I just didn't know uh, what they were doing here. What, what, you know, I know the ILA Hall, I thought, handled the, uh, the Siemens, but let's see what you got in your book. 
about this. All right, we wanted to know something about this building. Go ahead. Okay, it's called the uh, ILA Hall, the International Longshoremen Association, and it started its foundation uh, in Mobile in 1937. 1937. Yeah, 1937. Uh, the longshoremen load and unload ships from all over the world. Uh, they are a nationwide union. Uh, during World War II, they unloaded tanks and ammunition and did the same thing during the Korean War. They load and unload ships for the Army year-round. And we also had uh, the first president of the ILA was Edward Roan. Then we had Cleveland Wolf, George Dixon, Isaac Clemens, Seymour Irby, Murray Jordan and uh, and and Oscar Jackson. Wow. And uh, this place served as a place. I think Billie Holiday. Uh, she visited there as well. So it might have been like a hall at time where they could rent it out and have uh, some. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Wow. It's an auditorium inside the building. Okay, it's an auditorium. Yeah, it's in the building. You know what I used to thought when I would see this place when I was walking down to Dumbo, I said maybe that's where they have balls. I didn't know. I said it's a big place. It's a, a huge building. All the bricks are intact, ladies and gentlemen. We'll go in a little more with it. All the bricks are intact. This building, whatever they built that cement them bricks with back then, I mean it withstand hurricanes and everything. Look at here, still standing. This building is still standing. Wow. Well, Paulette, can you tell them um, if they wanted some more history on the Davis Avenue, can you tell them where they can get the book Avenue? Okay, uh, at, the, at the present time, the book is being reprinted. Oh, okay. And, yeah, it's being reprinted, and it should be available for the end of January. Wow. But you can check it out from the Mobile Public Library. Oh, they can check it out from the library. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to, and I know you're going to come with some more, a little bit more in there, but you come in with that book again. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I've got the old, the soft back, I've got the hard back, and I'm going to get this new edition. I sure am. Well, thank you so much, Paulette. Uh, tell them what you do. You are RN. I'm a retired registered nurse. Retired registered nurse. From the Mobile County Health Department. Wow. What's the name of the book that you help your husband write? Uh, the Centralia. And in the back of that book, you all be seeing the Mardi Gras? That's where I got that from, in the back of that book. When she sold the book, they had the DVD of the 1947-1949 Mardi Gras. It originated right from the Centralia book. Well, Paulette, thank you so much. Do you have a phone number in case someone that uh, may want to call and talk with you? Yeah, Ento two five one four seven three thirty five thirty two. How many books you got published? Uh, four. It was four books. Four books. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can you name them? Uh, yes. Uh, the first is Avenue, the Davis Avenue story, the place, the people, the memories. Then it was uh, In Memory of You, an educational legacy, and that's the history of the people our schools are named for. Okay. Then I wrote um, Booker T. Washington, Death in 60 Days, Who Silenced Booker T. Washington. Okay. And the last book I wrote was Treasured Memories, The History of the uh, Black Baptist Churches. All right. You all need to go and get those. Uh, book. Are they, are they at Black Classic Bookstore, some of them? No. Okay. Uh, I thought I seen uh, some in there. When I went in film, well, it so. used to be when they were in business. Uh uh, they in business and they they he said he ordered your book, Paulette. Yeah, they on Spring Hill Avenue. 
No, that's not black classics. That's uh, not black classics. Not gifts. girl. You know something. What's the name of that that got your books? What's the name of it? In English books and gifts. English books and gifts. Cause I remember black classic books. Cause they had my book. It's English books and gifts. You all go to English books and gifts. Cause he has uh, some of her books. He has some of her books, and he told me he was ordering some, Paulette. I went by there. Yes. Uh, yeah. Actually, right now, they're in reprint. Okay. They're being reprinted. Okay. All of them. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. All right. Y'all know that uh, you can uh, Google those books, but you got a phone number, a name, and phone number is going across the screen. Paulette, thank you for this interview. Thank you. You're very welcome. All okay. right. Jazz and Red, we love you. Hope you learned something about the ILA Hall when Martin mm -hmm. Luther King spoke. Jazz Red, we love you. Peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show, and I'm here with an important dignitary. What's your name, young man? My name is Alvin Alabama Lovett. Wow. I've been talking to this man. When I seen him get out the car with the coveralls on, I said, you, you dress like now organization would dress when they did their march, and you got your coveralls on. So you, you're, how long you been gone? Okay, I've been away from Mobile for almost 30 years. I hosted a television show right here in Mobile from 77 through 86 called Visions. Visions. Alvin Lovett. Alvin Lovett. In Mobile, Alabama, which was the NBC network, W-A-L-A TV 10. I remember Visions, but my mom knew you, Letha Dale. My mom, Letha Dale Edwards and Robinson, she knew you. And I, what year, did you go to Central? I graduated from the last class of Central High School. Wow. And as a student at Central High School, I spoke at the Neighborhood Organized Workers Meeting under the youth group sponsored by Dora Finley. And we talked about black history. Wow. The youth talking about the importance of loving ourselves. Wow. It's so important to care and love about ourselves. And that's something that's missing with our youth today when we have issues and violence against each other. So we have to learn love in the place of violence and then through the neighborhood organized workers. And I want to thank God for allowing me to be here in Mobile after 30 years to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday, a holiday that I helped to work to create wow. right here in America. Right so here. It is a blessing. Wow. We're, what, what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have an interview with him one week whenever he's available, and I want him to tell his story. Thank you, Mr. Lovey. Thank God, and thank you. God bless. All right. Peace out. Jazz Red, they getting ready to crank it up. They finna get in line. I got this pole in the way of me. They opening up everything. We got Mobile Police Department. They're making sure that uh, they stop the traffic and that everybody is safe. Everybody is safe. Looking good. Looking good. Looking good. Look at that. I got to go live, y'all. I got to go live. Wow. They're coming, ladies and gentlemen. Here they come. Here they come. Here it is. Here it is. I got the pole in the way. As soon as they swing around, I got to hold this phone, y'all. Yeah. I got to hold this phone. Cause this ain't working. I got to, I got to hold this phone. Here they come. And you know what, zoom in. Child, I'm filming. I'm filming and I'm live, okay? Y'all bear with me. Bear with me. They go to pay pay. <laughs> they go, uh, hey, how you doing? All right, that's BLX. All right, hi, BLX. They coming, y'all. They coming. Wow. There he is. Share the video. Share the video, y'all. We in Mobile, Alabama. This is Mobile, Alabama. Share the video. Hello, Mr. Hasi. Share the video. Share the video. Hey, y'all. Y'all share the video. Jazz Red. What's going? Hey, girl. I just met them sisters there. They cool. Wow. Here we go, y'all. Look at little man. Little man just waving there. How y'all like that? 
We in Mobile, Alabama. How y'all doing? All right, Jazz the Red Talk Show. How y'all doing? Look at that man now. Y'all know him. That big Ruby's brother there. All right, how y'all doing? All right, how you doing? We're live. We in Mobile, Alabama, showing some love for Martin Luther King. All right, look at that. We got that hopper there. What's going on, hopper? All right. She gonna come and everybody come on out every year. They coming. How you doing, sister? Over there in that green. All right, just fine. All right, y'all wave at my TV viewers. Oh, look at that. We got Levi in here. Y'all know that. What's going on? What's going on? Look who we got. All right, Levi, Levi, I know you were gonna be here. Wow. How y'all like that? Wow. How y'all? All right, there go Mr. Lovett and got in there. All right, he done met, he done met that lady. Y'all know her. Oh, that's that major red girl. That's simple there. That's simple there. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, wait a minute. He cheating. He, she cheating. She cheating. Hey, man, what's going on? All right, that's right. Ain't gonna ship y'all. What's going on? All right. Some of these folks cheating. They folks be walking, they riding. They say by any mean necessary. Uh oh, they driving. They say by any mean necessary. Jazz a Red Talk Show, and I'm bringing you something here. Oh, look at this. Isn't this wonderful? Wow. This is beautiful here. We got the young out. What's going on? <laughs> All right. We got the young out here. We got the... <laughs> wow. Hey, man, what's going on? I know, I know you all will be here. Oh, look at the little baby. Look at them, y'all. Look at them. Look at them. Happy New Year to you, too, man. Oh, wow. This is so nice. I met some good people down here, and uh, I, uh, I got some good people that I'm meeting. Hey, what's going on, man? What's going on? We got African American Heritage. All right, MLK. Happy MLK. We got uh, parents out here. We got them out here with their babies. Hey, man, what's going on? All right, that's a businessman now. Got his, got his wife and his grandbaby. All right. All right. Y'all, they're going to go down to uh, gonna the cathedral, yeah. I'm going to have to drive, too. Uh, I got, I'm got i old, but I'm filming. But uh, there we go. We got the popo. And, uh, well, we getting ready? Wow. I just love it. I love I love seeing this. I love seeing this. Families out. And, and people will be getting on there. They're going to be, it'll be more people. Because as you walk, people get in. That's the way my mom used to do it back in the day. As you walk, people get in. All right, Jazz got to go and check some stuff out. Jazz Red, we love you. Peace out. It's just blood just being shed in our streets. Not realizing that we had people. Uh, I, if, come on and clap for me. Come on, have a good time. Come on, look at your neighbor left or right at you and say, what's going on, man? What's up? What's up? What's going on?
Singing 
Oh,